Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. You are tuned into our YouTube channel for our weekly video analysis. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. So we're going to start off with the market regime and how I define the market regime, whether we're in a bull market or a bear market, because it keeps me on the right side of the big trend. We'll look at the, the bear because we're in a bear market and the bear is extending its grip on stocks as more stocks participate on the downside. We've got yield spreads widening considerably and that shows stress in the credit markets and only a handful of my 276 ETFs in the master list are up over the last four weeks. That's how broad the selling pressure is. So the market regime is perhaps the single most important factor when it comes to stocks and stock-related ETFs. And by market regime, I mean, are we in a bull market or are we in a bear market? Because when we're in a bear market, we have to trade by a completely different set of rules, bear market rules. That means things like not buying the dip. That means things like, like not looking for bullish continuation patterns or triangles or something like that. That means not playing breakouts. That means not trying to pick a bottom. So when you're in a bull market, you can play by those rules. You can look to pick a bottom on a pullback. You can look to trade a breakout. You can look for those bullish continuation patterns like falling wedges and triangles because they have a higher probability of working in a bull market. But in a bear market, they have a much lower probability of working. And that's what it's all about as far as trading and investing is concerned. Probabilities. We're looking to get the odds as much in our favor as we can. And when we're in a bear market environment, the odds against the odds are against us on trading the long side as far as stocks and stock-related ETFs are concerned. We're better off moving to cash or looking for alternatives such as commodities or currencies. I would say bonds, but bonds are also in a bear market, so I can't look at bonds right now. Uh, but the important thing is to know that we have to be very careful with stocks if we're in a bear market, because this bear market, as we'll see, is broadening its grip. It's, it's hitting more and more groups. Even the defensive groups were hit over the last three to four weeks. So what I've got to put me on the right side of the market is a composite breadth model. And it's got five different inputs. We got an S&P 500 trend and thrust model, and we have an S&P 1500 trend and thrust model. And then I've got the percentage difference between the five day and the 200 day. So on this chart here, you can see the red arrows, red arrows are when the composite breadth model in that first indicator window turns bearish, negative, and when it turns bullish. So it turned bullish at the end of May, 2020, and stayed bullish until January. We got some whipsaws, but it did turn bearish on April 11th, and we can see we've had a pretty sharp move lower. Now, the green line is a five-day moving average. The red line is a 200-day. And it's just a simple fact that bad things are more likely to happen when the S&P 500 is below its 200-day. When the five days below the 200-day, the odds of bearish outcomes is much higher. And when the S&P 500 five-day is above the 200-day, the odds of a bullish outcome are much higher. Because you can see when you're above the 200-day, pullbacks are your friends. You want to buy the pullbacks. But when you're below the 200-day, you know, you get this pullback, you had this big rally here, but you can see we had pullbacks and we didn't get bounces. So the fact that we didn't get bounces showed you how strong selling pressure is and was. Now, if we look at the composite breadth model, we can see it's deteriorated further. All five inputs are currently bearish. That's why it's at minus five. And one of the inputs for the trend model on the S&P 500 is the percentage of stocks above the 200-day. And it turned bearish in January, and it needs to get above 60% to turn bullish again, and it never did that, even on that March advance. And then when it turned down in April again, you can see we moved below 30%. So fewer than 30% of S&P 500 stocks are above their 200 days. That's a bear market number. The vast majority of stocks are in long-term downtrends. 
Now, here are the percent above 200-day moving average indicators for the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, S&P mid-cap 400, and S&P small cap 600. And you can see the S&P 500 is holding up the best at 28%, but we're below 14% for the NASDAQ 100. We're at 19% for mid-caps and 15.5% for small caps. So these long-term indicators have been bearish, which is the red shading, since the latter part of January and remain bearish. And I was going back and I was looking at prior levels when they got to extremes and what I would call, say, a stink bid. When things get so bad that you hold your nose and you buy in hopes that there's going to be a bottom at some point. And if we look back, we can see here in October, sorry, that's December 2018, we got to 10% for the S&P percent of stocks above the 200-day moving average. We actually got below at 9.52%. And then we can see in March 2020, we got below 10% for a few weeks and then moved back up in April. So when are things getting so bad, the darkest before the dawn? It could be when we get to that 10% level with the percentage of S&P 500 stocks above the 200-day moving average. The high-low percent indicators are also part of my breath models. And here we have the S&P 500 high-low percent. And high-low percent is just the percentage of new highs, 52-week highs in the index, less the percentage of 52-week lows. And you can see when it's positive and when it gets above 10%, plus 10%, you have the green bars, and that's bullish. And then it gets below minus 10%. You get the red bars, and that's bearish. And we've got it for the NASDAQ 100, the S&P mid-cap 400, and the S&P small cap 600. And we can see here small caps move below minus 10%, high-low percent did, in late November. And so that was a bearish signal. That's actually early December there. And they were the first ones to break down. And then in January, we had mid-caps do it, and we had the NASDAQ 100 do it. And it wasn't until the latter part of April that the S&P 500 joined the rest. And then you can see that new lows have seriously expanded because all of these are at minus 25% or lower. And what does that mean? Well, that means 25% or more of stocks in each of these indexes they are recording 52-week lows. And if you're recording a 52-week low, you're in a strong downtrend, you're leading the market lower, and you're pulling the index lower. So over a quarter of stocks in each of these indexes is hitting a 52-week low, and that is very bearish. Now, I've also got a stink bit out there for when this indicator hits an extreme, and I covered that in my written commentary on trendinvestorpro.com earlier today. So here's the main analysis page at trendinvestorpro.com. I've got a premium page for, for subscribers, which has a six-part series on using the trend composite as far as an ETF trend-following strategy is concerned. And I also incorporate the use of the market regime, and I have bull market and bear market ETFs in there. Now, on this main analysis page, I keep the market regime page updated on a weekly basis during the week, if it needs more, I've got an ETF trend signal and ranking table. And there you can see the articles. There is the falling knife article from today. And I talked about the stink bids, where we might find them using the percentage of stocks above the 200-day, the high-low percent indicators, and the S&P 500, how far this decline might extend. So check out trendinvestorpro.com if you want to know more. Now, I'm going to go to the market regime page here because a part of my market regime page and part of my market regime analysis is it has to do with the credit markets. And to analyze the credit markets, I look at yield spreads. And what we're seeing is a very sharp widening of yield spreads. So here we've got the AAA yield spread and the B yield spread. And basically, this is the difference between the yield on the triple B bond less the yield on the 10-year Treasury bond. And so the triple B is the lowest rated investment grade bond. And so when its yield is 
narrowing relative to the the distance uh, between the premium, between uh, the triple B yield and the 10-year yield, when that narrows, that shows confidence in the credit markets. And that was happening in 2020. And then it stayed low throughout 2021. And then we started to see the widening in 2022. And that's when the bond market was demanding more premium over U.S. Treasuries to hold bonds of a lower quality, basically. And then we had that sharp narrowing with the rally in stocks in March. But look at this sharp widening we're getting now again. And that is bearish. And if we look at the junk bond market, we can see a similar scenario developing. Look at that sharp widening in junk bonds and triple C bonds, which are the junk of the junk, the lowest rated junk bonds. So they're at their widest levels since 2020, the latter part of 2020. And this widening shows stress in the credit markets, and that is a negative for the stock market because these junk bonds are the most economically sensitive bonds out there. And if they're getting stress, then that means that the economy, the economic outlook is not that great. And that's why these spreads are widening. So I have a master list of 276 ETFs, and that's available to subscribers. And it's organized in a top-down manner. And I was running through some scans on this list, and I did a scan for the 20-day rate of change. And what I found was there were only, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of 276 ETFs are positive over the last four weeks, 20 trading days. And you can see it's dry bulk shipping, it's energy, the dollar, carbon, wheat, platinum, corn, and the commodity tracking ETF, DBC. So clearly commodity related here and the dollar. So that means all the other currencies are down. And so this means basically every stock is down, stock related ETF that's in this master list. Every bond ETF is down. The other currency ETFs are down. And the other commodity ETFs are down. The industrial metals ETFs are down. So this selling pressure has hit a broad swath uh, swath of the market. And the fact that it's hitting bonds and other currencies and industrial metals, gold is down, silver is down, palladium is down. So platinum is the only one that's bucking the downtrend here. Uh, But that's just how widespread selling pressure has been. So if you'd like to know more about TrendInvestorPro.com, you can click on the link in the description below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again next week. Have a great day.